It's incredibly rare to see even a great champion dominate an entire era of boxing. But Vitaly Klitschko, along with his equally terrifying brother Vladimir, did just that. With 41 of Vitaly's 47 fights ending via knockout, it would be easy to credit his success to his massive 6-7 frame. But Vitaly Klitschko was no mindless bruiser. In line with his doctorate in sports science and his love for high-level chess, Vitaly's style was nuanced and calculating. And although his techniques have been historically underappreciated, Big George Foreman himself stated he thinks Klitschko had one of the greatest left hands of all time. Watching Klitschko in the ring was a lot like watching a chess master casually push forward a pawn that then resulted in a 10-move force checkmate. But what really made Klitschko so unique in the world of boxing was that he had a specific tactic or even a specific kind of altered punch for any and all defenses that the opponent might employ. So today, let's open up his toolbox and take a look at Dr. Iron Fist's most dangerous tools. The foundation of Klitschko's entire style could be said to be his rising jab. Thrown from his unusually low guard, Klitschko's jab would come up from underneath his opponent's line of sight. And while this tactic made it take longer for his jab to reach his target, it also gave him a lot of flexibility to play with angles. For instance, Klitschko could bring his jab straight up to pierce through his opponent's guard, or he could curve it to circumvent their guard from the side. And this made it exceedingly difficult for opponents to continuously defend correctly as the fight went on. Defending one possible route naturally opened the opponent up for the other one. Klitschko simply had to feint one angle, then immediately land a more powerful punch off of the newly opened angle. And Klitschko got even more utility out of his lead hand by blending the lines between his jabs and hooks. Many times, he would punch in the trajectory of a hook, but with a completely straight arm. It's hard to tell whether it's more accurate to call some of these punches circling jabs or stiff-armed hooks. Looking at the jab-hook continuum, Klitschko used a punch from nearly every point on the spectrum. But whatever angle Klitschko happened to connect from, opponents always had to be wary of his devastating cross. Despite the benefits of throwing a rising jab from a low guard, one of the reasons it's not seen very often is because it leaves a fighter's head wide open for counters. But Klitschko got around a lot of the risk by keeping his weight on his back foot and leaning back as he jabbed. This would turn some of his jabs into little more than slaps. Klitschko knew that his jab didn't need to be a sledgehammer in order to be effective. He could still damage his opponents over time and set up bigger punches. At the same time, Klitschko could still get enough power into his jabs to keep opponents at range when they did try to close the distance. Klitschko could have a very stiff jab when he wanted to. And intercepting his opponents as they stepped forward into his jab added their weight to the power of the punch. But in actuality, the true benefit of Klitschko keeping his weight on his back foot as he jabbed was that it maintained a lot of potential power for his rear hand follow-up. Klitschko reserved all that potential power for moving forward into his right hand. Klitschko's jab was an effective weapon on its own. What Klitschko really used it for was to elicit a reaction in his opponents so that he could then capitalize on that reaction. For instance, when Klitschko's opponents tried to avoid his punches with head movement, Klitschko would track their head movement and respond in real time. This is incredibly hard to do and requires insane reflexes, but Klitschko had a way to tip the odds in his favor. Like a skilled craftsman, Klitschko had a unique tool for every individual defensive situation. In other words, whatever defense his opponent used Klitschko had a punch specifically tailored for that scenario. If opponents tried to slip outside, a common defense to the jab, Klitschko would throw a chopping right. This was similar in practice to Thomas the Hitman Hearn's chopping right, but was thrown much differently. Whereas Hearn's preferred to punch in an angled arc, often connecting with his palm or forearm even. Klitschko instead took advantage of his six foot seven height and simply punch straight down.
If opponents tried to smother Klitschko's punches by moving shoulder to shoulder, another common defense, Klitschko would pull out yet another tool from his toolkit, flaring his elbow up and out. By flaring his elbow up and out, Klitschko gave himself enough room to sneak his punch over his opponent's lead shoulder. Alternatively, sometimes opponents would try to move away from Klitschko's right rather than smother it. And for this, Klitschko had yet another tool, the highly underutilized lead straight. This punch can basically be thought of as a power jab, as throwing the right first naturally loads up the left with far more power than a regular jab. Some other fantastic fighters who use the same tactic include Jack Dempsey and Manny Pacquiao. But what about when Klitschko's opponents duck to the inside? Klitschko had two responses to this rare but equally effective defense. One was to run the opponent directly into a well-timed uppercut. The other way was to punch downward with his jab, the same way he did with his cross, effectively dropping all of his weight onto his opponent. But head movement was only half the story. Klitschko also had a number of tools to cut through his opponent's guard, often with real-time surgical efficiency. And while much of this came down to his astounding reflexes allowing him to adjust in real time, and having a large enough ring IQ to accurately anticipate his opponent's next move, what truly granted Klitschko the majority of his success were a number of high-level concepts that he worked directly into his style. For instance, in comparison to a lot of other successful knockout artists, Klitschko really didn't move his body that much to generate power, but counterintuitively, this is what led to so many of his knockouts. By limiting the movement of his shoulders and hips as he punched, Klitschko could maintain his balance and immediately follow up with another punch from any angle. You can think of it like a video game character who has moderate power stats, but maxes out on speed and agility. It doesn't really matter that the attacks don't hit as hard, because they hit more consistently, and there's always another one coming. Beyond this, Klitschko was always thinking two moves ahead. He would use one punch to drive his opponent into a second punch. Notice how Klitschko expertly uses overhands to entice his opponents to duck straight into uppercuts. Or failing that, the weight of the overhand landing could simply place them into that position. There's an old saying, if you know the enemy and you know yourself, you need not fear the result of a hundred battles. Vitaly Klitschko is a perfect embodiment of this phrase. A master who could exploit the holes in his opponent's game plan, who had the perfect tool for every situation and used them with surgical precision. From the Modern Martial Artist, this has been David Christian, wishing you happy training.